Ladies and gents, how we doing? My name is Neil. Welcome to Post to Post. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Penguins versus the New York Islanders series preview. And yes, I know I've got the San Jose Sharks merch on. I apologize. As you can see off to my left, we've got the Islanders and we've got the Penguins jersey. I collect jerseys. I only have one of each team. Unfortunately, one of the basically the two teams that I only have one jersey of each team and they're playing each other. So I can't wear the, any other jerseys I have. I tried to pick a neutral team in the West Division, and I just got this jersey, and I honestly, selfishly just wanted to wear it, so I apologize. Peep over to my right to see the video coming next, the series coming next. So, the Pittsburgh Penguins versus the New York Islanders has some history, and it is interesting history because there is there is a re revenge potentially upon us, and uh, it's going to be a potentially boring series to watch. I don't mean that to sound offensive, but guys, the Islanders and aren't the most entertaining team to watch. They're pretty defensively minded, so I don't think it's going to be a, on the top of priority lists and a lot of people watching, but it's going to be very good technical hockey, I guess. We'll, we'll put it that way. Very good technical hockey. If you're interested in learning about defense, probably watch this series, but we're going to break down some stats from the season before we get into my personal opinions on who I think is going to win and how many games, compare the teams a little bit, let's look at stats. Okay, Pittsburgh, 37 wins this season, and I'll just admit, or I'll just say real quickly, there is a Pittsburgh video coming of a, basically a seasonal report card. I'm going to talk quite in depth about the team, but I just want to say how impressed I am with the Pittsburgh Penguins. If you know me, if you're familiar with the channel, you guys know that I'm not a Penguins fan. But I am I can't say enough good things about the Penguins this year. Objectively, what a fantastic team. Uh, tremendous what they've been able to do in the last decade. Regardless of the people who have left, people have come aboard. Uh, working through chemistry, uh, aging core, just remarkable that they're continuing to be this competitive. So I, I really can't say enough good things about the Penguins. So 37 wins for the Penguins versus the Islanders, 32. Losses, 16 to 17. So... One more loss for the Islanders, but that's pretty close, guys. O OT, three for Pittsburgh and seven for the Islanders. Uh, if we look at points, 77 for Pittsburgh, 71 for the Islanders. Here's where things get quite interesting. We can going to compare goals for and goals against. Pittsburgh, 193 goals for. That is remarkable. And the Islanders, 152, which is very low compared to the Pittsburgh Penguins there, but it's actually pretty close to league average which isn't that bad. Now, goals against is where things also get interesting. So Pittsburgh won it in the goals for, but goals against, 155 for Pittsburgh, but only 125 for the Islanders, guys. That's what I'm talking about with the defense with the Islanders. It's such a, they're such a systematic team, and they play wonderful defense, and it just shows in their goals against statistic. I know it's not all about stats, but the proof is in the pudding. 125 goals against. That is awesome. Power play. Pittsburgh Penguins, 23.7% versus 18.8% for the Islanders. That is a pretty big gap. Penalty kill, 77.4 versus 83.7 for the Islanders. So that just shows you. Pittsburgh is the, the better offensive team. It shows in their power play. The Islanders are a better defensive team. shows in their penalty kill. So again, it's not all about stats, but there is a lot of correlation between play style and stats. And you have to pay attention to both. And that's what makes this series a little bit difficult to predict. Now, if I look at the head-to-head -head comparison between the teams, they've played each other eight times this season. And the Pittsburgh Penguins have pretty much dominated the entire season. It's, they've gone 6-2, and two, so which means the Islanders have gone 2-6. and six. So Pittsburgh kind of owns the Islanders this year, and I'm not saying that's going to potentially happen in this series. Wait till the end of the video to give my actual prediction. But it, it is... It is something to note. It is kind of significant because I did mention the revenge factor. So I've kind of broken these teams down into uh, factors. So we're going to look at the Pittsburgh Penguins factors, what could work for them, what, could, what they need to pay attention to, and then the Islanders. What are the Islanders factors? What do they need to do right or, or stop from doing wrong, maybe? Uh, we'll go from there. Let's start off with Pittsburgh. So the number one factor I have here is Crosby. Now, at the beginning of the season, I made a video and I said Crosby is still the best player in the NHL, in my opinion. And he had an okay season, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't unbelievable. He's one of the best two-way players in the game. He's one of the best stick handlers. He's probably the best, this is going to sound awkward, the best player, the best skate puck handler in the league. He's very good at handling 
uh, the puck off of his skates. You know, it gets a pass. Sometimes he just doesn't even take it off his stick. He'll use his skate and bump it up to his stick. He's very good at that, a very underrated part of his game. It's a silly part of the game, but it is something to note. If you ever watch Crosby, watch how good his feet work is with the puck. Um, but I, he's not the best player, and I think it's time to I think it's time to admit that. Connor McDavid. This is going to be an Edmonton Oilers video. This is not going to be a McDavid video, but Connor McDavid is the best player in the NHL. He proved it this year. Crosby faltered a little bit. Crosby's getting old. And now old is relative, but in the NHL world, Crosby's old. So I think it's time to pass the torch uh, of my opinion of him being the best player in the league and hand it over to McDavid. But uh, Crosby's going to need to be amazing because this is, you know, we're coming up on Crosby's potentially last chance or one of the last chances, not the last chance, but one of the last chances for him to win a cup. The team is is aging, and if he stays with the Penguins, I don't know if things are going to get better. They make it more difficult. It's, it's hard to predict. So this this is a big year for Crosby. The other factor I have is Latang. Now, uh, Latang is known for getting injured like every day of his life, but for whatever reason, Latang has been super healthy recently, and not only healthy, but incredibly productive. A very underrated player of the team. He doesn't get as much praise as he should. And I think he could be a massive factor in the series. He could be, I don't like to say that a player can drag a team to the next round because it really is a team effort, but he is, he's such a factor for me in this series and in general on the team. He could make or break games. And I guess technically that could you know, make or break a series. So uh, keep, a, keep a close eye on Latang. He's probably going to do some pretty awesome things. And if he doesn't, I'm not necessarily going to be surprised, but he's having a pretty good year. Uh, the next factor I have is is the is the depth, and if you're familiar with Pittsburgh, you know they have it. Guys like Rust, uh, Dumoulin, uh, McCann, they've got so many guys who can just contribute, not just defensively, but uh, defensively, physically, in situations like on the power play, uh, on the penalty kill. It's a really dynamic roster. So, I've I've really enjoyed watching Pittsburgh. That's a hard sentence for me to say, but I've really enjoyed watching Pittsburgh this year. It's a fun team to watch, and they kind of done it without Malcolm the entire year, which, um, you know, it's, it's impressive. They really did some special things this year. So keep an eye on their depth and um, the goaltending. Now, I was extremely critical of their goaltending, I guess, at the beginning of the year. I just had a lot of question marks. I didn't really feel faithful in their goaltending. And by goaltending, I mean Jari and DeSmith. Now, Jari's played, Jari's played 39 games. DeSmith has played 20 games. Both are pretty good statistically. Um, so I'm 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 bringing them up not to really criticize them or, or say anything negative. I'm just I'm just bringing the I don't know factor still a little bit into the playoffs. But I don't I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think they're going to be fine. I don't think they're going to blow any games or anything like that. As long as they play like average, I think Pittsburgh will do well. So the Islanders, let's segue into them. What are their factors? Uh, their biggest factor to me is their system or their, their defensive system, which is you know Trotz's system. He can do, he can take a lineup. It doesn't even matter what players are on the team. He's proved it in Washington and Nashville and now the Islanders. He can walk in, look at a roster. Doesn't matter if you've got goal scorers, uh, defensemen, and, uh, you know, goons. He can take and meld the players as long as the players commit. And it's, it's, such, a, it's such a cool thing to see. Look, defense is boring. It's super boring. Trust me, I'm... I hate, that's why I hated the, the Devils so much in the 90s and the early 2000s. Defense is boring, but it's such a cool thing to see as a hockey fan when you see all the players buy into a system. And when all the players buy into a system, it doesn't necessarily have to be exciting to watch as long as the results are positive. And Trotz has proved that you know, year in and year out, if the players buy into the system, the team has success regardless of who the players are. So I think the Islanders are really good um, case study of players buying into a system and that is their biggest asset really is their defense and their willingness to commit to that system and stick with it and even if they don't like it as you know as i'm sure barzal is you know tired of, of trying to be a little bit more responsible than he wants to be but he's still buying into it and he still has liberties he can still do what he wants to for the most part and stuff but you're not going to see him go all mcdavid every single game he has to be he has to, even though he's an offensive player, he has to be. He has to think the defense versus offense, which is difficult for him. But he's, he still does it because he buys into the system, and it works. So that is their biggest asset. Uh, goaltending Varlamov has been very good. I'm not. I'm not. I'm bringing him up, but I'm not worried about it. Kind of like Pittsburgh. I'm. 
I'm not really worried about it, but if something does go wrong, it's not necessarily going to surprise me, but we'll see. And uh, they got a decent back backup in Sorokin. Now, depth. They ha also have depth. They've got Bailey and Eberle and, you know, Zizekas and, and Bavillier and a bunch of players on there. That This team is literally built around depth because that is how the system works. Every player contributes. It doesn't matter what line you are. You play the same system. Uh, you and you you just you do your work you go to work and you get it done and that's kind of the mentality of the Islanders Which again isn't exciting, but it is work and it it at the end of the day you get paid and uh, Depending on how well you work this playoffs you're gonna get paid and that paid is a big old shiny trophy, so I Don't uh, I don't know who's gonna win this series. I with everything that I just said I I have a prediction but I'm not confident in it. I don't feel strongly one way or the other. It wouldn't surprise me if the Pittsburgh Penguins stomped the Islanders. It wouldn't surprise me if the Islanders stomped the Penguins. It's just, it's a hard series for me to gauge. So I've got Pittsburgh in seven. I think experience factor is going to come in a little bit with Pittsburgh. Not that the Islanders don't have experience, but I'm just thinking that there's, there's a really strong core in Pittsburgh, and I'm wondering if that experience... They've been there before multiple times. I'm wondering if that's going to pull them through a little bit further. Um, maybe they have some more gas in the tank. So I'm saying Pittsburgh in seven. I brought it to seven games. I, I It's a weird series. I, like, I, I don't know. It's a weird series to gauge. So let me know down below in the comment section. Do you guys think Pittsburgh's going to win? Do you think the Islanders are going to win? Leave your predictions down below because I'm coming back to these videos after she's all said and done and we're looking at what you guys think. So thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below to catch the next series preview, the ones after that, jersey concept videos, jersey unboxing videos, logo ranking videos, and all kinds of hockey talk, all kinds of playoff talk on the channel. We'd love to have you on board. So hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys real soon. Have a great day. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.